take a look at is kind of the difference between true collection versus false collection. I want to take a look at the biomechanics of how some of this stuff actually works as opposed to some of the, the ways that people describe some things with their horsemanship. Um, when I take a look at collection, really if I'm going to define it down, what I'm looking at is that weight transfer from the forehand back to the hindquarters. Okay? Normally standing here, horse has got about 60% of the weight on the forehand, 40% on the hind end. And when I want this horse to be athletic and work um, in collection, I'm really looking at trying to swap that. Um, we know that when we put the average size rider on the average size horse, the withers can drop as much as two inches or about four centimeters. Um, so just by sitting on this horse, we're changing that horse's balance point. So when we start working this horse in collection and we start shifting that weight to the hind end, really what we're doing is getting that horse a little closer to its own natural balance point that we have disturbed by sitting in the saddle, okay? When I look at collection, kind of the way I look at it is if we take a look at, we take our hand and we put our hand in water. If you push your hand in the water, a wave will roll up away from your hand, right? That's kind of what I'm looking at with the horse. As the pelvis drops, when that pelvis drops, that wave rolls up through that horse's back and then up through the neck. And that's where we get that roundness through the back and that roundness up through the neck, okay? But I want to make sure that roundness is coming from the right place. One of the things we hear a lot and we see a lot today in the, in the modern horsemanship is a lot of people talk about using the spur to lift the back, right? Um, does it work? Yeah, it, it does. I'm going to go to the other side so you guys can see it over here. Um, if I come up under this horse's belly, I can lift that horse's back, okay, and come up there. And we can see that lifting of the back. Yep, little lift of the back, okay. The back does lift. However, did the pelvis do anything at all? It did nothing, okay. And the lift is from here. If I do this and I lift this here, See where the lift is from? It's from the middle, right? I know, you're gonna be really sick of me here in the next few minutes. Um, it's from the middle. We don't have the engagement of the pelvis, we have the lifting from here. We have a disconnect in the lower lumbar because we had no engagement of the lower lumbar, which is absolutely critical to true collection. Um, so a lot of times what we see is when we see people lifting the back, what they're actually getting is really kind of a false collection. Now, I want you to watch the back lift this time. Back lifted a little more, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. And I know, um, he's like, I hate you. Um, go ahead and turn him a little bit, Catherine. Um, the back lifted a little more and it lifted from here. Okay. It lifted from this point forward because the pelvis came down. Okay. And this is the big difference in that technique of lifting the back from the center versus engaging of the pelvis, we get that lifting from here, that wave carries up. As that wave carries up, it then lifts that rider up here, and then that carries through. As long as you have relaxation in the pole. What happens is if you have tension in the pole, right up here between their ears, I know, um, then you're gonna have tension through that whole top line and it's gonna block all of this. It's almost like that wave goes through and then it crashes into a breakwater and it just destroys everything. So if we have the engagement of the pole, we have the, relax, or the relaxation in the pole, the engagement of the hindquarters, then we can start getting that roundness and that, that true collection that we're looking for. But just lifting the back doesn't get it. Um, if we start to also take a look at, you got another concept of, well, if we drop the head, okay, we drop the head down, I know, and we get that head to drop, the back lifts. 
Okay? This is another concept that we hear a lot of people say, especially in the Western horse world. You don't see it in the dressage world, but in the Western horse world, we drop the head, we lift the back. Well, again, if we're focused on lifting the, lifting the back, we've already lost the plot. Okay? Um, yes, if you drop the head, the back can lift, but the goal is not lifting the back. The goal is getting the pelvis under. The back lifting is just a byproduct. Okay? Um, all right, break for there, but now we're going to continue. Thank you.